Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Jocelyn. Today we are going to be specifically talking about diet and exercise merged in with spirituality. Make sure that you've watched my foundational videos again because this whole playlist is going to be completely dedicated to just like diet and exercise and specifically to high vibrational foods. You know, really utilizing the things that I've gone over in all of my foundational videos as far as using law of attraction and using your thoughts to kind of change the molecular structure in your body with your brain chemicals that are associated with positive thoughts and then also changing your diet to high vibrational foods because yeah law of attraction is great like you can think all these positive thoughts and you can create all these brain chemicals if you're not eating the foods that go along with that then you'll probably be feeling a little bit of misery when it comes to your own health and your body. That's all the information that I'm going to be going over, but I'm going to be giving a little bit of a different perspective. There's probably like a million, probably like a billion videos out there of people who have lost weight, how they did it using like paleo diet and keto and all of these different diets. We all know that we're narcissistic to some degree. We all fall along this spectrum where on this side of the spectrum, there's healthy narcissism. And then on this very opposite side of the spectrum is where like a sociopath or psychopath would lie. And you guys are probably like, what? Like, why are you relating diet to narcissism? And it has everything to do with it. Because narcissists operate from the low vibrational emotions of shame, guilt, and fear, which makes sense. We all have shame, guilt, and fear at some level or some degree. This is where I'm gonna tie in a little bit of psychology. If anyone follows Ken Wilber, I'm a huge fan of his. He's written tons of books. One I would absolutely recommend that I'm going to be quoting from a bit in this video is called Integral Meditation. It's fascinating. You would think it's just about learning how to meditate. No, it's merging psychology with our spiritual growth. And the more you meditate and you calm your mind, you're able to see these habitual patterns and things from our development growing up in childhood that affect us as adults, like diet and eating, because all of that is correlated. So Ken Wilber specifically talks about how there is this phase of development we all go through called the oral anal phase. During the months of infancy that are zero to 18 months years old, all of us go through this phase. It's where we are discovering the world with our mouth. Right? We are using those two functions. The other one I really don't have to get into much. During that phase of development, if anything goes wrong at all, usually something does because since all of us are narcissistic to some degree, which we all have some level of shame, guilt, and fear to us, if those low vibrational emotions are projected into an infant's experience, they are entangling with those brain chemical releases, right? They're, they're observing the relationships around them and also having the same exact brain chemical releases, then what will happen is they will create either an oral addiction or an oral allergy. You know, we know of this, like an oral fixation or when we emotionally eat, that's what explains it. That's where we're at completely as a society. That's why we have such problems with obesity. When those same exact brain chemical releases come up in your experience, then your automatic response is going to want to put something in your mouth to soothe yourself. Now, this is why it goes into spirituality and even consciousness. When you let a addiction or a any type of escape that you have that will help you to escape your reality and escape the emotions that are coming up in your experience, then you actually become unconscious. When you learn how to have self-mastery and overcome those desires, that, that need to put something in your mouth, then you actually start evolving. That's what the whole awakening process is all about. It's going 
all the way back through these phases of development and learning how to stay conscious through them and change your brain chemical releases that are associated with those experiences. So let me, let me give kind of an example. So say when you were an infant and your mother was afraid of something like some, because you have to understand that our parents, they're still evolving they're still going through their own law of attraction experiences, things based off of how they were raised. So they are accumulating these experiences that cause all of their brain chemical releases. And then that is why when we are in front of them, we take on those same exact patterns of thoughts, beliefs, and brain chemical releases. And then the brain chemical releases get stored in our body. So say this infant is experiencing their mother having a very big fear response, a very big reaction to something in her experience because she's attracting something that's stored within the cells of her body. Then that infant will also have the same exact brain chemical releases. This is where the patterns start to come up. This is where you start attracting the things, the thoughts, the beliefs, the brain chemical releases, it all starts all the way down at infancy. And not even there, it even starts in the womb. It goes way, way far back. Whenever this child starts experiencing that same exact brain chemical release as they get older, they will again want to put something in their mouth. They will continue to go through that same cycle. So there's a combination of things that happen because you have to understand that the amino acids from the food that you are eating and not only you're eating, the amino acids that you're taking into your body from the mother's milk or from formula or whatever it is a baby or an infant is taking in at that phase of development, you have to keep in mind that the chemical combination between the food that they're ingesting and the brain chemical releases that are in their experience from their mother or father or even siblings, it's going to cause that same exact chemical reaction in your cells. This is what is building the rest of the cells in your body. You can go back to my biology and law of attraction video. You get amino acids we get our nine essential amino acids from food and then the other amino acids we can create in our body but the fascinating thing is our brain chemicals are made up of amino acids so when those amino acids go into the cells of our body they dock onto those receptors on the cell the amino acids go into the cell and they combine with the messenger rna and the ribosome and this is how even more proteins are built together. They, they kind of construct the amino acids to build even more proteins within the body and all of the cells are made up of proteins. So you have to understand the rest of your body is completely being constructed off of the food that you eat and the thoughts that you think. You can jump over as well to my video on free radicals. They're the man-made or energy vampire molecule or the, I love to call it the narcissistic molecule because again, we're all narcissistic to some degree. Free radical is a molecule missing an electron. Some of the many places that free radicals come from are toxins in the air, processed foods, chemicals, household chemicals, or even chemicals that are on our produce. It can come from meat, cooked oils, alcohol. There's like all of these different places that we get free radicals from. So when free radicals go into our body, they actually steal the electron that they need from healthy cells in our body. So this is why it's so important to be focusing on diet and the foods that you're ingesting. The only real way to counteract free radicals is by taking in a high vibrational diet. Now, people think that sounds like a spiritual thing, but it's simply having a lifestyle where you're providing your body enough photons of light and high energy so that it can counteract those free radicals that are, you're taking in on a unconscious consciously constant basis. For example, the one thing that you should be ingesting is antioxidants. Antioxidants are in a multitude of foods and you can look that up. There's like blueberries and all these different kinds of food that you can eat that have those extra electrons that will counteract the free radicals in our body. And also being out in the sun. 
people think oh yeah you need vitamin d and they think of it like that no you are getting the high energy photons of light from being in the sun it will completely transform your body. This is where I'm gonna merge in a little bit to a doctor that I follow. His name is Dr. Sebi. You can either look in my liked videos, you'll be able to find all my liked videos by Ken Wilber and Dr. Sebi. But the thing about Dr. Sebi, the reason why I started following him, in 1987 he actually was taken to court for practicing medicine without a license. He was claiming that he could cure all of these incurable diseases such as AIDS, cancer, cancer, diabetes, herpes, sickle cell, blindness, paralysis, all of these different ailments he was actually curing. He was taken to court and as far as I know, he represented himself and actually won his case. They told him to bring in nine people that he had cured proof of that documentation and he brought in 77 people that he had cured of all these ailments with vegetables, herbs, teas, things of that nature. When we talk in the spiritual world about vibrations and energy, it's not just a spiritual hocus pocus thing. It's a quantum physical thing where you are actually ingesting high vibrational foods and energy and it's helping to counteract the things in our environment that are actually stealing our energy. Things like free radicals, things like parasites, I've read different reports, but about 85 to 90% of people have parasites in them. Really think about that. We have all of these things that we have to counteract within our body. Going back to free radicals are actually the cause of 99 plus diseases. So they're the cause of not only physical diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, even mental illnesses. So when you think about that, it does affect our consciousness. When we talk about consciousness, people get really confused by that, that word and that whole concept. And it really just means that you're able to stay present and aware and in this moment rather than escaping and going to an illusion in your mind or letting fear and anxiety come up. It's learning how to change your brain chemical releases. So again, always keep in mind the foods that you are ingesting combined with your brain chemical releases. This is what waking up is. When we talk about diet and herbs and things, you know, I'm vegan, but I'm not the type of vegan that is going around shaming other people for eating meat and doing all of these things. We have to have compassion and understand that other people are just doing what they were raised to do. It's a pattern and it's not easy to break. Even as I'm talking about this, the trap that you need to make sure you don't fall into is shaming yourself for not eating better, for not taking care of, you know, for not choosing to be vegan. There's definitely a process of transitioning if you're looking to do that but they are completely linked. We are evolving as a human species into a different type of being. We don't need to ingest meat any longer. As we combine all of the information that I went over, I'm talking about narcissism and oral addictions and fixations and free radicals, the whole awakening process, the whole becoming conscious, it's going back through these phases of development and learning how to change your brain chemical releases, change the chemical makeup of your body. Those chemicals are literally what constructed you in the first place. This is why you have triggers that come up in your experience. They're just triggering the cells, all the chemicals that have been stored in your cells from brain chemicals and from the foods that you eat. I hope all that made sense. I'm going to be making a ton more videos on this playlist. I'm so excited because it's gonna be a combination of things. It'll probably be a mixture of like foods that I eat, cleanses that I do personally that have worked for me. I'm a really big fan of doing water cleanses and herb cleanses. And I just recently got done doing a 10 day water cleanse, which was super awesome. So that's kind of the thing that I enjoy doing. So I'm gonna be walking through my own processes, how I have done things.